Before we solve the Schrodinger equation for any specific cases, we need to take a little sidebar and discuss operators. So an operator is something that does something to an object to create a new object. So that's true in the most general case, but usually we're interested in terms of functions, specifically for now functions of x. So some operator O, which I represent by sometimes a capital letter, sometimes not, but always with this little caret hat on top. So the operator acting on f of x is going to return g of x. So this is just anything that acts on a function and gives us a new function. So some examples of operators that you've probably already seen, uh, d dx, taking the first derivative with respect to x, that would take our function and give us a new function. Um, the integral of, of x with respect to x, so integral f of x dx applied to f of x, that would be a function, uh, sorry, that would be an operator. The square root, that gives us the function such that that function squared equals f of x. Multiplying times 2, taking it to the nth power, all of these things are operators. But specifically in quantum mechanics, the things we're going to be interested in the most are so-called linear operators. So those are operators that obey the following property. So if my operator acts on a function such that the function is some coefficient times a function plus another coefficient times another function, etc., etc., as many functions and coefficients as you want, that this is equal to the following, that we can factor out any multiplicative factor, we can factor out this coefficient, so it equal to c1 times the operator acting on f1, plus c2 times the operator acting on f2. So adding together multiple things and multiplying individual parts of that by specific numbers doesn't affect the result of the operator. So in general, we would say that the operator acting on a sum from i equals 1 to n of a coefficient times a function for n times equals the sum from i equals 1 to n of the coefficient times the operator acting on that function. And these coefficients can be any number, so it can be any integer, any real number, uh, any complex number as well, so it could have some imaginary part to it as well. We can, we're going to see case, lots of cases in quantum mechanics where this can be a number which isn't even a real number. So let's see if some of these examples are linear operators. So we have d dx of 2x squared plus 3x. So is this equal to 2 times d dx of x squared plus 3 times d dx of x? Well, d dx of x squared would be 2x, so 2 times 2x would be 4x, plus d dx of x would be 1, so that's 3, so this total result would be 4x plus 3. So here, the derivative of this total function would be 2x squared is 4x, and the derivative of 3x is 3. So these both give the same result on each side, so differentiation, the first derivative operator, is a linear operator. What about the square root? If I take the square root of 2x squared plus 3x, is that equal to 2 times the square root of x squared plus 3 times the square root of x? Well, this is not true in general. It may be true for a few values of x, but it's not true for every value of x. So this is in fact not going to be a linear operator. So the reason we care about linear operators is because classical properties or any kind of physics property that you can measure are related in quantum mechanics to linear quantum mechanical operators. So there will be specific operators for momentum, for position in the x direction, for kinetic energy, for potential energy, but most importantly, there will be the operator for total energy, which is called the Hamiltonian operator. So these operators are something that act on a function and give a new function. They're represented by these letters with hats on top or carrots. They're linear if they obey this type of equation. Uh, some operators are linear, some are not. Classical properties are related to quantum mechanical operators, and every property has an operator most importantly, our total energy Hamiltonian operator.